friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card for you guys using the Avery L. C. Prize stamp set and the Echo Park Pirate's Life 6x6 pad. I've stamped my images out on some Copic Friendly cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers today. I wanted to use some cool grays to color my great white shark, so I'm using C0, C1, C3, and C5. I'm starting with the C5 down toward the bottom since I am going to have a wave overlapping him, so I'm just doing a little bit of a shadow down there, and then I'm blending up with the C3. I'm going about halfway up, and then I'm going to come in with that C1, blend out the edge of that C3 really well, and then I'll fill in the rest of the gray part with that shade. I'm going to go back over that transition just a little bit and help that blend, and then I will use the C1 for my shadow on the white part of his body. I'm laying that in about the same height as I use the C5 so that will match, and then blending that out with the C0. And I will also come in with my colorless blender and just soften up that C0 into the white. For the inside of his mouth, I'm using R22, R24, and R29. This is a more peach toned red, and I think it works really great for like the interior of a mouth such as this. So I'm starting with that R29 and just carefully outlining his teeth. I don't want any red to get into that white area. So I'm just using the very tip of my marker and holding it really straight up and down so I can get really thin little strokes. And then I'm going to blend out the edge of that with the R24. Again, just using really small strokes. I don't want to oversaturate the paper since red is notorious for bleeding outside the lines. And then I will come in with the R22 for my lightest and fill in that center area. I should also mention that the paper that you're using is really important when you're coloring with Copics. You definitely want to use a cardstock that is meant for coloring with alcohol markers. If you use a cheaper, thinner cardstock, the ink is just not going to have any place to go and it's not going to hold up and you're going to have issues with bleeding outside the lines. So that's just a tip for you. You definitely want to use a Copic friendly cardstock. While I have my red combo out, I'm going to color in the polka dots on my fish's party hat and the pom-pom up at the top. I also colored in his lips and one of the stripes of my noisemaker. I wanted my puffer fish to be yellow, so for him I'm using Y000, Y11, Y13, Y15, and Y17. And I'm starting with my darkest shade, the Y17, and I'm going to do some shading on the back part of his body. I'm only concentrating on the top half for right now, as I want to color the bottom half in a little bit of a lighter shade. So I'm blending out the Y17 with the Y15, carrying it more towards the front of his face. I'm going to fill in all the area that's left on the back part of his body with that Y13, just saving a little highlighted area right on the top of his face near his eye, and also taking that Y13 down towards the bottom half of his body for my darkest shade. I use the Y11 to fill in the highlight on his face and as my midtone on the bottom, and then filled in his belly on the bottom with the Y000. I'm adding just a bit more shading down on the bottom half of his body for a little more contrast. And then I'm also going to color in one of the stripes of my noisemaker with some yellows. And then I'll move on to my shark's hat. He has this little party hat crown on the top of his head. So I'm going to color that starting with the Y17 for my darkest. Then I blend it up with the Y15 and then the Y13 and finishing with the Y11. I'm going to use a very pale blue to give a little bit of shadow on my shark's teeth. I'm using the BG11 for that, just doing a little bit of color down towards the bottom. And then I'm also going to use both of those shades to color in the rest of my fish's party hat, I'm using the BG11 as my darkest and then blending towards the front with the BG10. 
I'll add a little more of that BG11 since these colors are so similar in shade and then I will also use them to color in one of the stripes on my noisemaker. And then for the final little stripe, I'm going to bring in the BG13 and just color that solid. It's such a small area. I've got three scraps of blue cardstock that I die cut using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Wave Borders. And I'm going to pop them into my Misty and do a little stamping. I'm using the School of Fish image to add a little interest to each of my waves. And on this lightest one, I'm using Lawn Fawn's Mermaid Ink and that will dry back just a bit. On my second panel, I'm going to use Lawn Fawn's Merman ink, which is just a little bit darker. And on this one, I'm actually going to move the image and stamp it down a second time over on the right. On this last panel, I'm going to stamp in Lawn Fawn's Deep Sea Ink. And you'll notice I'm also changing the direction that the fish are swimming on each panel. And I did that just by flipping the image upside down. Now I'm going to go back to my first panel and use the deep sea ink that I used on my darkest panel and go ahead and stamp my sentiment that says, hope your birthday is swell. While I have my Misty out, I'm also going to stamp the inside of my card. I'm going back to the mermaid ink and I'm using the little puffer fish again along with the sentiment that says, a little extra puff for all those candles, which is really cute. I'm going to take the Avery L Oval Burst die and run that through my cuddle bug with some plain white cardstock. And then before I continue on with that, I'm going to adhere my pattern paper down to my card front. I just trim that down to four and a quarter by five and a half so it fits over the entire front of the card. Since it is an A2 standard size card. So I'm just making sure that's nice and straight and smoothing that down into place. And then I also did add some foam tape to the back of my oval burst. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backer sheets. My darkest wave is going to be the furthest away. So I'm going to line that up with the frame and then press that down to pick it up with the foam tape. I'm also going to add a little bit of that lighter blue way up at the top for the sky. And then I put the medium blue in front of the darker blue and press that whole panel down onto my card base. I'm going to adhere my lightest wave using some score tape. I thought that the dry adhesive would work a little bit better than the liquid since I'm adhering it down to the panel that has all those little cuts in it. So I just line that up with the bottom edges of that oval burst frame. And now I've added some foam tape to the back of my shark. I'll adjust him until I have him exactly where I want him and then I'll press him down to secure him. And then I have my little blowfish that I'm going to add at the front. So I'm using a little bit more liquid glue and he's going to go down at the right bottom corner. And then I have the little noisemaker that I have that I'm going to put in his mouth. So he's kind of like um, scaring off that little school of fish right in front. As a finishing touch, I'm going to take some four and six millimeter Pretty Pink Posh clear droplets and adhere those down using my pick me up tool and some Ranger Multimedia Matte. I find that this adhesive works really well with things that go through the mail. And the tool works really great for getting things just where you want them since the end has that little bit of tackiness to it. And then you also have the little tool that comes out of the back of it that helps you um, just move things around with a little bit more precision than you could get with just your fingertips. And that is going to complete our card for today. I'll lift that up so you can see all the detail and give you another peek at the inside. I think this would be a perfect card for a little boy's birthday. I know we have several shark lovers in my family. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and let me know you did by hitting that thumbs up button. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's a great way to show your support. You can also go ahead and ring that notification bell if you want to make sure that my videos always end up in your feed. 
Here's two extra videos that will hopefully tide you over until my next one. Until then, I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.